Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. Today I'm going to show you how I go through my workflow on Lightroom editing portraits. So let's go ahead, dive right into it. Okay, so as you could see here, this is the actual after. And what I'm gonna do is actually reset this entire picture and go step by step on how I like to edit my portraits. And then I'm gonna be doing a series with different landscapes and also stuff like that. But today, we're just focusing on portraits. I'm gonna teach you guys hopefully some tips and tricks because I do use a lot of different things that a lot of people don't even know are actually inside Lightroom. So let's go ahead and I hate to do this. Let me just, you know what, let me show you guys. This is the before and this is the after. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this completely and hopefully, if I could do this right, we're gonna get back to that. So let's go ahead and press reset. Okay, so what I like to do first when I'm in Lightroom, and if you don't know Lightroom, this is obviously the development module and this has your basic corrections from, you know, composition, you could edit the tone curve, hues, luminance, saturation, vignetting. There's a bunch of really cool effects. You could even do touch-ups in this, which I prefer in Adobe Photoshop, but you can do them here in Lightroom. So the first thing I like to go ahead and do is make sure I enable profile corrections. This usually is in particular with wider angle lenses for like landscapes and it helps get rid of that fisheye effect, but I always still click it. Sometimes it goes ahead and corrects something. Sometimes it doesn't, but it'll let you know right here. I was using the 85 millimeter 1.8 Sony lens. I love that lens for portraits. So next we're going to go ahead and remove chromatic apparition. And that's when you're, when you have too much contrast between say a black and white, you'll see like a purple or green fringing around like that, that line that helps reduce it or sometimes it even gets rid of it completely. So that's something you definitely want to go ahead and do. Okay, so let's go back to the top and I'm going to show you guys, I always crop first. Instagram has a 1080 by 1350 portrait. So you're going to want to head, you're going to want to go ahead and actually crop to that size from the beginning. So you know what you're working with. And so that when you go to post, you're not cutting people's heads off or limbs in awkward places, stuff like that. So I'm going to click right here and I like to hit auto for the straightening and that's going to straighten my shot. And then we're going to click original and the four by five, eight by 10, seems to work best for me for Instagram. And now we're gonna play around with this right here. I usually like to go ahead and keep that thirds rule. So you normally wanna be in like one of the corners or something like that with the portraits. So I'm gonna drag this over here. Now, I wish I could get this in the back completely, but I can't. So I'm going to try to line this up. That looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and hit crop. Boom. Okay. So I normally like to play with the white balance first. I shoot on auto. Um, that's just my style. So we're going to go ahead and let's just see how that works. 4100 and plus nine it's a little bit too cool for me so let's go ahead and bump that up a little bit maybe that's a little bit too warm let's try 44. that looks pretty good okay so we have that the tint plus nine her skin looks pretty good so now let's go down to our basic corrections tabs um what I normally do is start with highlights. I like to drop the highlights, crush them a little bit, boost up the shadows a little bit also. So let's go ahead and see. I like that right there. And then we're gonna go ahead. All right, so we're gonna go negative 31 and about a positive 33. 
Um, it's tough because I was underneath the pier. I didn't have a flash, but I had a diffuser. So there was a lot of harsh light coming in and we were able to block a lot of it. So you know what? I'm gonna lighten up the picture a tiny bit more. Let's go with like, that's a little bit too bright. I'm gonna say about 52 and I'm gonna bump the exposure up just a tiny bit. Okay, so that's looking better already. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and play with the whites and the blacks. And normally with the whites, I'm gonna go ahead and bump them up slightly. Blacks, I'm gonna crush a little bit. And I don't, you know, I've seen people go ahead and drop the highlights and boost the shadows. But for me and my preference, it gives you different color skin tones and just tones in general that I'm not looking for. So let's go ahead and drop this. You know what? I'm gonna boost this up. I'm gonna boost this up right now. And go right about there. I like that. And now we're gonna play with the blacks. Now we don't wanna go ahead and make the gray shirt look completely black, but we do wanna darken it a little bit. So I'm gonna drop it to about, see like this is already looking a little bit too dark for my liking. So let's go ahead. I like it around 24 looks pretty good to me. All right, so we just got done with the tones module. Now we're gonna go ahead and play with the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. So clarity is going to give you that HDR look if you go ahead and bump it up or if you drop it. Um, I prefer for my portraits to actually lower it to smooth out the skin a little bit. When you go too high it gives you that crackle over edited look so i like to stick between negative 10 and negative 15 and that's usually my go-to so let's go ahead and see how it's like softening the picture just slightly and i like negative 10 so i'm gonna leave that vibrance when you play with it adds a little bit more pop to the color not necessarily saturation because saturation like really gives you that color but the vibrance kind of brightens like illuminates the color kind of like the lumen slider so i'm actually gonna leave that for right now and let's go down to the turn the tone curve the tone curve i usually just put a slight little s so i'll mark it one right there one right there and I would bring up the highlights just a little bit and notice how I did underexpose the picture and now with the slight adjustments it's actually coming together really well post you know processing so let's go ahead and I want to drop this a little bit and add a little bit of contrast. I normally don't touch the contrast slider. I edit all of my contrast using the tone curve and you could always click custom and hit like medium or strong contrast that'll give you two different s curves but i like to play around with it myself right now i'm gonna go down to the hues and saturation and luminance sliders for this one i kind of just want to adjust the skin slightly because it looks a little bit orangey to me and for the skin tone i'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna drop the orange and i would say let's see Let's do negative 24, negative 24. That looks good to me. And just to play it safe, I'm gonna bring the orange lumens down just to negative 10. Cause I really wanna have like that, that good skin tone. You see people editing and the orange skin, the yellow skin, too much magenta. The skin correction is very difficult at times depending on your white balance settings. So this is super important and you know, just play around with it, see what looks good to you, and it's all personal preference, so it really doesn't matter. Next, I'm gonna go down to the sharpening, and I'm gonna teach you guys some tricks. So if you're on a PC for sharpening, if you hold down the Alt, and you click on the actual guy right here, the little slider, it's gonna give you different options, stuff like that. So. What I do is I go to masking first before I do anything with uh, the sharpening. And then I'm gonna, this is pretty much outlining what 
is going to be sharpened. And for me, I prefer more my subject. I don't need the sand because it's, you know, bouquet out. So there's, there's no real relevance to sharpening that. So what we're going to do is I want to make Lauren pop a little bit more. So I'm going to hold down alt. I'm going to try to get her. Now you don't want to go ahead and crank it all the way up. So, cause I want to get a little bit more detail. So I'm going to bring it around to probably about 79 looks good. And now for the sharpening, I'm going to bump it up and I'm going to click here and we're going to zoom in just a little bit and see there really isn't much noise. As you could see, there's no real grain or anything like that. And I'm actually really pleased. I might drop it down just a little bit. Let's go down to 60. And then I'm going to bump up the luminance just a little bit for the noise reduction. And that's going to smooth it out a little bit more. You don't want too much because that's going to really adjust the picture to the point where there's no return. So I'm going to leave it at 18 looks really good to me. Now, I love the way Lauren's coming out, but I don't like how bright and blown out the backroom is, the background is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to click the circular, I think it's, what is it called? The radial filter. And we're going to go ahead and draw a circle oval. Now I'm going to put the oval over her and I hope you guys know how to do this. If not, I'll be teaching you something today. And so we have her selected. If you hit the O button, this red mask over it is showing you what exactly in the picture is going to be adjusted now. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to the feather and lower that so that it's more of the background and not so much Lauren. So we're going to feather it a little bit like that. So now if you could see, I'm going to take my we're going to reset that and I'm going to go ahead and just drop the exposure a little bit and notice how if you crank down, obviously it looks stupid, but you get the picture. That's, that's exactly what's happening. So you want to do it so that it's a happy medium and I like it right there. Now, because I have the feather on, you could see that some of Lauren's hair is now selected and it's being slightly dark and not completely. So what we could do is we could click brush go to erase and now we could go ahead and just simply paint over the red and now it's going to erase any of the exposure drop on her actual body or her hair so we could just go ahead touch that up we could get her jeans down here a little bit her arm and we're just going to play with it just you know get that going and while I'm doing this, guys, if you do like this tutorial, please drop a thumbs up. It's my first one. I know it's going to be a little bit longer than usual for you guys when it comes to tutorials, but I am using different techniques that I really haven't seen many YouTubers or editors show. So hopefully these short keys and these little tips and tricks help you guys out. And in the comments below, let me know what type of other edits you'd like for me to do. Okay, so that's just about done. Let's hit O. Get rid of it. My computer's working a little bit hard because I have so many pictures right now. And to me, that looks pretty damn good. So she's popping out right now, looking great. The background's slightly darker and it's not so blown out. And it's really setting that contrast. There's only a couple more tweaks from here. Sometimes I'll go to the D haze and if you drop it to the left, it's going to go ahead and really brighten your picture and soften it, flatten it. But I like bumping it up sometimes just to about plus 10 or plus five. Um, let's go ahead and do plus 10. And now that we did that, we're going to just adjust the radio filters slightly. Let's bump that up. We're going to bump it back up because now it's a little bit too dark. Okay. This is looking pretty good. And this is what we have so far. So as you can see, there's a significant difference in contrast, a little bit more lively color, 
to me, it's just coming together really well. And it's, it's nothing crazy. I'm not really doing that much overkill, just slightly tweaking the photo to my liking. Um, Lauren does have green eyes and I want to bring that out a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is we're going to click the brush tool. We're going to go to Iris enhance. And now we're just going to bring that up. If you paint over, we're going to brighten up her eyes. Cause that green, I really want it to pop, really want it to pop in the pictures. So let's go ahead and paint over here too. There we go. It's starting to look really good. Really good. I like that a lot. Um, I do want it to pop a little bit more, so I'm going to bump it up. Yeah, that looks good to me. Let's see. So notice how you can see a little bit more color in her eyes. Um, another thing I like to do is go ahead, click the brush tool. Hit new. We're going to go to teeth whitening and it's not that she has yellow teeth, but who doesn't want a picture perfect smile. So I'm going to go ahead and just start painting. And what it does is it pretty much just drops the saturation down and bumps up the exposure slightly. And we're just going to paint for a little bit. I'm going to fast forward this part right now so you guys can see the final product of this edit after the teeth whitening. All right, so we just finished the teeth whitening. Let's look at that. Gorgeous smile. Eyes are popping. The picture's really coming together right now. There's just a couple minor tweaks that I would adjust right now at this point. If I wanted to, I could go in Photoshop and get rid of the stray hairs, but being that it's not that much of a close-up portrait, you're really not gonna notice it, so I'm not even gonna waste my time doing that. But what we could do is we could hit the spot healing, the spot removal tool, and just go ahead and select some imperfections, because like, let's face it, no model's perfect, they're all beautiful, but everyone has like, look at me, my face. I mean, I have bags under my eyes because I stay up till 4 a.m. in the morning, so everyone could use a little bit. Um, just don't go overkill. Go nice and slow, little tiny bits here and there. And I'm just gonna remove just a couple things. Like I said, it's not that much of a headshot, but it's just something where I like to clean up all my pictures when I'm doing them. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this right now. And that's really it. I'm just gonna once again, glance over all my sliders. Now you can always play with the color tones and stuff, but I personally at this moment for this type of picture, I'm not gonna touch that. Um, we sharpened everything, that's good. We could add a little bit of a vignetting. So if we wanna do a little bit more, that's a little bit too dark, but I'm liking that right there. And that's really it. I mean, looking at it right now, let's, I mean, there's really not much. I'm pretty much done. So, whoops, it's control Z, Alt Z, control Z that. All right, I'm gonna bump it up slightly. And that's it. This is it right here. This is the final picture. I know the video is a little bit long, but this is my process for editing a photo. Um, I'm gonna hit Y so you guys can see the before and after. And to me, the difference is there. It looks great. And I'm super happy with this edit. So guys, if you did like this video and you want to see more, I'm going to work on making them a little bit faster, but with the different things that I was doing, it does take a little bit of time for me to explain how to erase and how to, what tools I use, what brushes I use. So thank you for being patient. If you did enjoy this video, if you did learn something, let me know in the comments below what you learned from this video today. If you're new to the channel, and you want to subscribe, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Um, and that's really it. That's it. I love the way the picture came out. And I hope, you know, you guys enjoy this too. My name was Jay from Be Visionary. I'll see you next time. Peace out.